Today's a sad day. It's Wednesday. And it's a sad Wednesday because tomorrow's Thursday, and Thursday is the day that this car, the Cadillac CTSV Sport Wagon, goes home. You thought home was Michigan? No! This car's from Germany! I feel like a broken record saying it, but this car is one of the absolute coolest vehicles ever made. Why? Look, it's a black station wagon with black wheels, yellow brake calipers, a supercharged Corvette motor that makes 556 horsepower and a six-speed manual transmission. And I've been lucky enough to live this thing and be its kind of uh, shepherd, if you will, for a year, and tomorrow it's all over. In addition to the 556 horsepower, the CTSV's LSA engine also produces a very impressive 551 pound-feet of torque, enough to, when in the right hands, induce wheel spin in fourth gear. And while I love the power, the real secret to the CTSV wagon's charm is the magnetic ride control suspension. Using what in my mind must surely be magic, electric pulses constantly vary the viscosity of the magnetic fluid in the dampers giving the CTSV one of the world's best ride handling compromises. Our particular V-Wagon hit 60 miles an hour in 4.1 seconds, the quarter mile in 12.5 at 115 miles per hour, and completed our figure eight in 25.3 seconds. Just to give you some perspective, the BMW M3 hit 60 miles an hour in 4.4 seconds, completes the quarter mile in 12.8 at 111 miles per hour, and goes around our figure eight in 25.1 seconds. In other words, the V-Wagon is totally ridiculous. Hello, I'm standing here in Bruges. Behind me is the bell tower of the Market Square. We were gonna go up there, but the view from up there is the view down here, and I can see that from down here. Now, what are we doing in Bruges? Some of you might remember a story we did called the Great Midwestern Beer Run. That's when we picked up our long-term Cadillac CTSV wagon in Michigan, and my buddy Drew and I filled it up with beer from seven microbreweries and drove it 2,000 miles back to Los Angeles as fast as possible. To honor that, I've decided to perform one last beer run, and to do so, I've come to a country known for its beer, Belgium, to a city known for the people that love to drink it, Bruges. Then, later on in the week, we're heading off to a very special place in Germany, and I can assure you, it's got nothing to do with beer. The history of Bruges is fascinating. At one time, it stood as the most important port city in all the lowland countries, outshining even Amsterdam and Antwerp. Through the centuries, its port gradually silted over, and the area's population was quartered, falling from a high of over 200,000 inhabitants to less than 50,000. Bruges had become so insignificant by the turn of the last century, the Germans never even bothered to destroy it during either World War I or World War II. Post-war, people realized that a largely uninhabited medieval town would make an ideal tourist attraction. Today, the 20,000 citizens that live in the historic center play host to more than 5 million tourists per year. Spend an afternoon strolling its winding cobblestone streets and you will understand why. The Castile Brewery is the eighth largest brewery in Belgium, a country world renowned for its beer. A huge variety of styles are brewed by Castile, including Brussels style sour ales, more commonly known as lambics. See those wooden beams hanging from the ceiling? Over many years they've been inoculated with the bacteria necessary to produce sour beers. It might sound disgusting, but please trust me that spontaneously fermented or wild ales are among the very best in the world. Most fascinating of all, to me at least, was the bottling line. Hugely automated, extremely loud, and weirdly hot, 
The bottling line at Castile is mesmerizing. As great as Bruges was, I didn't ship the CTSV wagon across the Atlantic to drive on cobblestones at 10 miles an hour. I had a date with Germany. It's pretty cool climbing back inside of this car. I mean, I hit the seat memory button and position one is still the settings I had. The battery terminal is still missing because we burned it out when we were jump starting a minivan. I mean, this is the car that I drove for a year and it's in Germany. It's just so cool. You know, in a place like this, because we're really close to the Nürburgring and you know, we're one out of two cars with a Porsche 911, this qualifies as a real exotic. I mean, we've seen, I don't know, 15 Ferrari 458 Italias, one Cadillac wagon. We've seen two Agueras, just one Cadillac wagon. Plus, this car is just so good to drive. I mean, station wagons don't handle like this. And maybe even more incredible, they built this car. I mean, GM at the height of their bankruptcy went ahead and built a station wagon with a supercharger and a manual transmission. So a little while back, I ran into John Heinrensee. He's the guy who set the seven minute, 59 second lap in a CTSV sedan. And that was an automatic. And I asked him, I said, Why, why'd you do an automatic? Because I've driven both cars and I always feel that the manual is a little bit quicker. And he said to me, oh, well, you know, we were uh, programming the transmission software for two weeks. So I was just really familiar with driving that car around the Nürburgring. And so I figured, you know, we had the opportunity. Why not just go for it? But he said that he felt he could be a second or two quicker with a manual. So we're here at the Nürburgring to prove that. And hopefully by the end of the day, some guy named Johnny is going to set a fast lap in a station wagon. Nürburgring is, I think, the famous racetrack in the world. It's, it's a so demanding track. There's not one lap like the other one. It's an, yeah, the only track in the world where you can see that. And that is making this track so famous. People coming from all over the world here. Uh, people from Russia, from the US coming here just to drive the track. Doing public hours when you're watching how many people just driving for one day here, staying overnight, buying a ticket, going on this track. They're coming with cars, campers, buses, motorcycles. It's amazing how much influence this track has to people and to motorsports at all. When you talk about a world vehicle, it has to be developed with the dynamic expectations that the world expects and the Nürburgring brings that out. You can develop a car here so that you get every type of input, lap after lap, and it's a very repeatable input in terms of how does the car brake, how does the car uh, handle when there's a heave motion with yaw at speed. And it's very difficult to replicate something that has so many of those events in one lap. This is the proving grounds for vehicles in, in the world. Johnny O'Connell is a guy that should be a household name but isn't. His four GT-Class victories at Le Mans and nine podium appearances is the most ever by an American. Not only that, he's won Sebring outright eight times, the most in history. Currently, he's racing for Cadillac in the World Challenge Series. In 2005 or six, you know, GM sent me here. I'd been doing a lot of uh, development work on, uh, on C5, Z06, C6, Z06, the ZR1. Was, was in the line and so, uh, so they brought me you know, out here and uh, mind blowing. The only way I could really put it is it's like it's Top Gun for drivers. It is the most intense place period on, on the planet. It is, uh, it's unlike any racetrack you ever get on. Johnny wanted to show me around the track. Mother of God, this guy can drive. All right, now we haul ass down here. Third gear, fourth gear. About the bridging, we're gonna go into fifth gear, and this is what I call "oh shit" one. Oh, Over God. the top, <laughs> back off, light brake, all an ass brake, carry your momentum up the hill. Yeehaw! Up in the fourth, brake. 
fall into the carousel. Little slippery, full throttle, and out. Oh, that was pretty. <laughs> and this next place is a friggin' trip. I love this one. I love this one. Brake over, light brake again, eyes in. This is really tricky here. You gotta wait, wait, let the car set, and then full throttle. And you look out in front of you, and all you got is straightaway. 162. 162 is good. 165. 65 is good. <laughs> Holy crap. That was good. All right. Again. <laughs> now, switch up. Yeah. And yeah. your turn. Well, it's going to be what a letdown for you. Then it was my turn. While it's true I drive for a living, you're watching my seventh ever lap of the Nürburgring. I didn't put a wheel wrong, but I didn't exactly put a wheel right either. Still, I loved every single second of my time in my old Cadillac on the Nürburgring. All right, you're gonna come up, right, left, little bit of break, you're good, stay in third, and then come through here. Now when you're straight, down a second. Nice. Good, and floor it. Nice, fall in there, fall in there. Good. Well, there's 150. That's hauling. Ease over to the right. And shut her down. Yeah. Here comes the rain. There's the rain. There's the rain. The rain prevented us from making an attempt at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, so Johnny O'Connell's fast lap was pushed back to Wednesday, July 18th at 7 in the morning.
Thanks, guys. So, the CTSV wagon didn't go around the Nürburgring quite as fast as I would have liked. Pick an excuse. The wagon weighs 100 pounds more than the sedan. The track was still wet from the day before. The engine showed up in Germany with 37,000 miles on it. A Cadillac engineer told me the wheels, quote, weren't exactly round anymore. Still, my old Cadillac ran the Nürburgring's 12.9 miles in 8 minutes 12.1 seconds, which, as far as I can tell, is the fastest a station wagon has ever gone. And I'm good with that.